Hello everyone, this is Robert, and I'm not exactly sure what this video is going to be about. I have a Creality K1 Max that I really haven't been using all that much, and I think it's time to decide if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to sell it. So I'm trying to find the least amount of effort that I can do to increase the print quality and get this thing to suck a little bit less. So I'm going to swap out the hot end, do a couple other things, and see if we can get it printing just a little bit better. The issues that I'm having with the K1 Max are very similar to what a lot of other people are seeing on the internet. I'm getting a lot of ringing, I'm getting a lot of VFAs, and I'm also getting a lot of just kind of inconsistent extrusion with a lot of um, patterns and stuff as you go up. So the layer lines really just don't look all that fantastic. I've read a ton about this and there's a lot of different theories. Some people are even stripping these things fully down, replacing all the belts and pulleys and idlers. I'm not going to do that. Um, I end up picking up a new hot end. This is a Triangle Lab CHCBOT. I don't know. I don't name this stuff. Um, relatively inexpensive. It was a new hot end. I also got a CHT nozzle. That's one of those, you know, triple splitter nozzle things. Got one of that. This whole thing was about 37 bucks. So pretty low investment. So I'm going to install that, see if that fixes anything and also do some tuning on some of the print profiles because I've heard the speed at which you print can dramatically change the print quality, so we're gonna see. First things first though, is I need to get some baselines. So this is upgraded to the most recent firmware as of making this video. I actually reset everything back to factory. All of the routing and tuning that I did is completely taken off. So this is a factory printer right now. Let's get some baseline tests done. So I'm not going to do a lot of exhaustive testing because I just really don't want to. I'm going to do three models before, three models after, all the same. I'm using Prusament Galaxy Silver as the filament. It prints really well, and it's also kind of brutal at showcasing surface finish defects and things like that because gray always does a really great job at that. Black is too hard to film, colors always kind of look really nice, and white is just an awful filament that no one should use. For the tests themselves, I'm doing this 3D printer test from Autodesk. I've used this before, and it's a very dense model that has a lot of different things, and it's actually very, very difficult to get perfect on pretty much all printers. The last two tests that I'm doing are going to be calibrations that are directly inside the slicer. I'm actually using Creality Print as my slicer for all of these models. I've heard a lot of people say that it actually performs better than Orca Slicer directly with the K1 Max, so I'm giving it a shot. And so far, it's perfectly fine. There's really nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly functional for most things. So I'm doing the max flow rate test. I'm starting that out at 10 cubic millimeters and going up to 30 and we'll see if the maximum um, flow rate increases with the new hot end and nozzle. And then as the last test, I'm going to be doing the VFA test. The VFA test really shouldn't be that impacted by the different hot end, but quite frankly, I'm just kind of curious on the K1 Max how it performs because I do see some of that artifacting on the surface. So we'll kind of see what the best speed to run this machine is. And I'm just kind of curious. I've never really done it before, so I kind of want to see how I can dial that in and tune it. So we're going to let these print, then swap the nozzle and the hot end, reprint everything, and then compare the results. Actually installing the hot end was much easier than getting footage of me installing the hot end. I don't know how people do it because I am just in front of this thing. There is no good angle for me to kind of show the actual head of the machine without me directly in front of it. But it, it was pretty easy. There's um, a screw at the back and that was the thing that got me as I did the two from the bottom but miss the screw from the back. Once you get the screw from the back out, the whole thing kind of slides out. The connectors are glued in place, so I just kind of had to use a scalpel to kind of scrape away the glue. Once I got all that out, everything was super, super easy, and it shouldn't need any further calibration. And now comes the fun task of reprinting everything. Hooray! I think in total all these prints were like over eight hours, so it takes a long time to do something like this. I started with the max flow rate test because I think this is the only one that's going to have a really dramatic difference. And there was a difference, and I'll talk about the final details later. It was about a 20% increase in max flow. 
And I'm not sure how much of that is the nozzle and how much of that's the hot end. I suspect that most of it is just the nozzle. And then I did the other two tests. I did that um, Autodesk calibration one, and then I did the VFA test. And both of these you know, turned out just fine, no issues. I should probably mention that these files were reprinted directly from the interface of the machine. So I didn't make any changes, I didn't re-slice anything, I didn't send them over from Creality Print. These were the files, the exact files I printed the first time around, and I just printed them directly from the interface once again. So no changes were made, I didn't do any calibration, I didn't go through the setup of the machine, just basically swapped the nozzle, it had no idea its nozzle got swapped, and then reprinted. So if you're expecting to see some massive difference between the new hot end, you're going to be disappointed. Here is the original and here's the new one, and they're very, very similar. I don't really see a lot of difference between them. There's a little bit of stringing on, well, both of them. They did print the full height. The 0.2 did end up being stuck in. This should um, pop out. I don't think I've ever printed this and had that not stick, so that's pretty standard. Bridging is pretty much the same. They look very, very similar. Um, the overhang did okay. Um, I've never seen that be perfect either. The underside's decent. They're pretty similar. I think the only difference that I see is the surface finish on this one is just a little bit rougher. This is the um, original. Surface finish, finish is a little bit rougher, a little bit nicer on that, but both of these are perfectly adequate, just with some little minor issues here and there. So let's look at the VFAs. I realize I'm being very unscientific about all this. Uh, the VFAs really showed no difference, and it shouldn't show any difference between the two different hot ends. And I don't really see any major issues. This is the original, this is the new hot end, and if you look very closely, this might not even show up on camera, there's a little bit of rippling right here, and it kind of goes away. I think right about here is 150 millimeters a second, so anything over 150, that is just kind of going away. And these two definitely look about identical. There's a little bit of an issue along the edge. That is from pressure advance. Um, I tuned that separately. But yeah, they look pretty good. And, you know, I'm starting to realize that the firmware and the slicer is probably more of the issue more than anything um, because these are looking pretty decent once you start getting above a certain speed. So here's where things get a little bit interesting. This is the max flow rate test and on the original one this ended at about 23 and a half cubic millimeters and this one managed about 28 cubic millimeters. So there's a 20% increase overall and that was even a little bit conservative because this one started to kind of have issues a little bit before then, so I eh, call it maybe 22, 23, and this one was pretty good almost to the very end of the test. So this almost managed to do 30 cubic millimeters, where this one was really giving up much, much sooner. So there's a 20% increase in the overall max flow. Now, I'm not sure how much of that is due to the CHT nozzle or how much is due to the different hot end, but there's definitely a difference here. Um, pretty noticeable, sizable difference, and for the $40, if you want that extra flow, this is definitely worth it. So kind of interesting result there. So part of why I'm even doing any of this is I'm trying to figure out if this printer is worth keeping, so I did a pressure advance test, and it looks pretty good. I definitely need to do some tuning. You can see a little bit of an issue right there. So I definitely need to tune a little bit, but generally this was looking pretty good with the default values. So pretty happy with that. And lastly, the ringing test. I was really surprised by this because this printer used to ring really, really bad. And as a lot of people know about this printer is the stock settings. It only has input shaping values for, I think, the x-axis, and it just copies those over to the y. So you get kind of different ringing, and we can actually see that here. On the y, you might not be able to see that, but there's a little bit of ringing right there just a little bit, this isn't that bad. And on the X, there's pretty much nothing. I couldn't detect anything really on the X. And if we look at the backside, everything looks really good. And keep in mind, this gray filament and the lighting that I have is really gonna accentuate this stuff. This is worst case scenario and 
I'm not really seeing any issues. There's just a tiny, tiny bit on the y-axis. But overall, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with all these tests. Everything came out really, really nice. I'm having a bit of a hard time wrapping up this video because I'm not really at all sure what I learned. If you're looking at upgrading your Creality with the Triangle Lab, whatever the acronym is, hot end, go for it. It's less than 40 bucks, especially with the CHT nozzle if they still offer that. Less than 40 bucks, you're gonna get 20% increased flow rate and you're not gonna cause any additional issues. So I'm very, very happy about that. Definitely worth the upgrade. I think the biggest upgrade I did is undo all the routing that I did at the very beginning when I got it, update the firmware that wasn't available at the time, and then using Creality Print. All those things together, this is a very decent prototyping machine. I don't think this is gonna be my you know, primary printer right now, but if I have the others going and I just need to you know, do more volume, need to get more parts out, yeah, it's definitely going to work out. I only tested this with PLA. I did have issues with ABS and ASA, mostly due to the bed leveling. It has to detect the bed at a lower temperature and then you heat up to 100 or 110 and the bed will kind of flex and warp after those temperatures. So I was having some issues with first layer being very inconsistent on ASA. So that's a whole nother thing and I'm just not gonna use it for ASA for the time being. But overall, the Triangle Labs was a good idea. Um, there is the Micro Swiss as another option, but it's significantly more expensive and doesn't give you the ability to use off-the-shelf nozzles. It kind of has a proprietary nozzle and there's not that many nozzles available. The Triangle Lab allows you to use um, the MK8 nozzles. So any of those you can just use directly in that, which is really cool. So it is an upgrade, allows you to use um, less proprietary nozzles, increases the flow rate, takes maybe only 15 minutes to add in there and you don't need to tune anything. So happy with that. Am I gonna keep this printer? Man, I don't know. Uh, probably, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I do have an FL Sun S1 coming maybe in about a month and I might also have a T1 coming if they ever email me back. Uh, we'll see where that's going. I don't know how many printers I need out here. I do kind of like playing around with stuff. But it was kind of nice to see that with a little bit of love, I do think the Creality could end up being a really, really nice printer. And I don't think you have to go in there and like remove all the belts and remove all the idlers and do all that stuff. I just think you kind of have to keep up with the firmware, keep up with the newest slicer, and you know, maybe tune it a little bit. I think if I was using that filament a lot and I went in and tuned the pressure advance and tuned the profile and got it all dialed in, I think it would be a fantastic printer. So that's my two cents. I don't know if this video is useful for anyone at all. It was kind of interesting to see. And if anything, I like that this printer is now more usable to me. Um, initially, I was just gonna sell it immediately on Craigslist, but yeah, I'm actually using it for parts right now and I'm having good results. So I'm happy about that. As always, thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next video. Bye.